Oh, well, first of all, thank you also so much, Rama, for that amazing IOTA demo. I just want to reiterate what, uh, what Rama said, which is that uh, IOTA and UNI data can often be very complementary, and it's helpful to look at the two data sets together. Um, and, and yeah, actually, we've been working with them for uh, several years now, and in many of our research reports, we do use uh, both UNI and IOTA data. Um, so UNI uh, is an acronym for the Open Observatory of Network Interference. It's a mouthful. Uh, it's a free software project um, that has been around since 2011, 2012. And uh, our goal is to measure internet censorship and other forms of network interference around the world. Um, and in order to do this in practice, uh, our team has built a free and open source uh, uh, free and open source apps, which are called Uniprobe, that you can install on mobile and desktop in order to run a variety of different uh, network measurement tests. These tests are designed to detect various forms of censorship and other forms of interference on the network level. And the way we have created the system is that as soon as Uniprobe users around the world run these tests on their network, the test results are automatically sent to our servers we automatically process and openly publish them as real data. And thanks to our global community around the world, uh, we've had the opportunity to publish uh, hundreds of millions of network measurements from 239 countries and territories around the world from 2012 until today. And all of this data is open data and it's updated in real time um, as soon as people run new tests all around the world. Um, so as part of this brief presentation, I'm going to introduce you to UNI and how you can get involved, how you can uh, run tests to detect uh, uh, censorship or to check for censorship uh, on the network you're connected to, and how you can look and, and find um, UNI data. Um, and on this note, we've been part of the Keep It On campaign uh, since 2016. It's been really fantastic to have this opportunity to work with Access Now and many human rights organizations around the world. Um, so if you're an advocate or interested in joining uh, the coalition, we definitely encourage you to do so. And we hope you will find uh, these tools useful. And if not, we would love to hear from you on how we can improve them in order to make them more useful to you. Um, so as mentioned, we uh, build an app, which is called Uniprobe. This is more or less what it looks like, um, although I'm sorry that the desktop image I just realized now is a little bit outdated. Um, the desktop actually looks exactly like the mobile. And um, as you will see, it has some cards, uh, which are thematic for the testing of websites and other types of tests. And you can run these tests by uh, tapping run or tapping on each individual card. Uh, this is just to say that um, you no longer need to be um, a technologist running tests from your terminal, but instead everybody who um, owns the, you know, a mobile phone um, or has a laptop can potentially uh, install this app, uh, which is free, in order to run the tests. And it's available on mobile for Android, FDroid, and iOS. And on desktop, you can, you can uh, install it on Windows, Mac OS, and we also have a command line tool for Linux. So when you run the Uniprobe app, essentially what you are doing is that you're running different types of tests. Uh, depending on the network that you are connected to, you are testing that specific network. So if, for example, I am connected to Vodafone in Italy, that means that the tests that I'm running are checking if Vodafone in Italy is implementing specific types of censorship. Um, and the tests that we include, we have many different types of tests uh, that have been developed from 2012 until today. And we're constantly uh, creating new tests, um, all of which you can learn about through the net test section of our website, which is linked below. And we also link to the source code. And we do that because we encourage community review of the tests. And if you have ideas on how we can improve them, or if you would like to contribute to your own test, uh, we would love to work with you on that. So broadly speaking, when you run the Uniprobe app, you can check uh, if specific websites are blocked and you can collect data which shows uh, how your ISP is blocking those websites, which censorship technique they're implementing um, and further information. You can also check whether specific instant messaging apps are blocked. So we have tests for WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal um, uh, and Facebook Messenger. And by running these tests, you can check to see if the apps are blocked by, by your ISP and if so, how they're blocking them. And the how part can be interesting because depending on how the block is implemented, 
that can potentially uh, be useful information for circumvention. And I know that Gustav will talk uh, a bit more about that later. And speaking of circumvention tools, uh, what we commonly see around the world is that when uh, popular platforms are blocked, such as uh, social media platforms that a lot of people rely on for uh, communication and for information, we commonly see uh, the blocking of uh, circumvention tools as well, uh, such as the blocking of popular uh, VPNs. And this seems to be an attempt to prevent people from circumventing the censorship and enforcing it. And so that raises the question, which VPNs work, uh, which ones are blocked. And that is why we also have tests for measuring uh, whether specific circumvention tools are blocked. And currently we have tests for Tor, Siphon and Rise of VPN. And actually the Rise of VPN test was um, contrib contributed by the Leap Collective, uh, which is just an example to say that we uh, welcome your contributions if you want to work with us on new types of tests. And then the app also includes other tests uh, such as NDT and Dash for measuring your network, for measuring the speed and performance of the network that you're connected to uh, and for measuring video streaming performance. So it seems that a common use case of our app is also to understand the performance of their network. Um, and if analyzed in bulk, uh, this data can potentially uh, be useful for examining some cases of, um, of throttling potentially. Uh, as a heads up, I should probably highlight that um, Uniprobe is an investigatory tool. Um, and what I mean by this is that the, the app itself includes tests that are specifically designed to expose censorship. So in its nature, in a way, it's kind of a political tool. It's a, it's a tool for investigations. And therefore, it may pose some potential risks depending on your personal threat model and depending on uh, what you're testing and depending on which country you're running um, the, the test from and what the political environment um, is of that country. Um, and I should also highlight that Uni, Uniprobe is not a privacy tool in the sense that the tool is designed to detect censorship, but is not specifically designed to protect your privacy. And just like with any other software, if someone is monitoring your internet activity, such as your government or your uh, ISP or your employer, they will be able to see that you are running Uniprobe just the way they will be able to see all the other software that you're running from your device. Um, so the fact that you are running Uniprobe is not in itself um, hidden, uh, despite the various um, efforts we've taken over the years to um, obfuscate that. And on this, po on, this, um, on this point, I should also highlight that because Uniprobe is run by community members around the world, and often um, you do see that there's more censorship and also more high-risk environments, from the initial design stages of Uniprobe, we've tried to ensure that um, we're only collecting the data that is necessary for characterizing censorship without collecting any personal information. So for example, we do not collect um, IP addresses or any other information that, or PCAPs or any other information that we think could put the user at risk. However, a, a thing to know is that by default, when you run a test, your test results will be published. And that will include uh, your country code, the network that you ran the, the test from, um, and the specific technical network measurement data that varies depending on the test that you run. Um, we don't, that data in itself is not identifying. However, if you are, for example, the only Uniprobe user in a country and you are under surveillance, then maybe publishing uh, your test results may not be the safest thing. But obviously this requires more in-depth uh, threat modeling uh, and, and this needs to be evaluated further. That said, uh, through the Uniprobe app, you do have the choice to not publish your test results by disabling the publish results option in the settings. And another thing to be aware of is that um, the default uh, lists of websites that you will test include some categories of websites that might be fine to test in some countries, but might be a bit more provocative to test in other countries. Um, so if you would like to have more control over which websites you are testing, uh, there are various things you can do and um, through the app, as I will explain now. On the one hand, what you can do is that um, in, in order to customize your use of Uniprobe, depending on what you feel comfortable with, you can contribute to the, the lists of websites that are tested by Uniprobe. The lists of websites that are tested by Uniprobe are, are called test lists, and they're currently hosted and they're hosted on, on GitHub uh, by the Citizen Lab. 
you can also determine which types of tests you run um, because not all uniprobe tests carry the same potential risk. For example, if you're running a speed test, uh, maybe that has uh, less associated risk with testing a website that is banned in your country. Um, and as mentioned, in the settings of the app, you can um, customize the app depending on what you feel comfortable with. For example, you can choose to not have your uh, test results published. And if you're interested in learning more, we definitely encourage you to read our data policy, uh, which is on our website and linked here um, through the slide. So the lists of websites that you would be testing with Uniprobe are, as mentioned, uh, hosted on GitHub uh, by the Citizen Lab. And there are essentially two types of lists that you would be testing when you tap run in the app. On the one hand, you will be testing the websites that are included in the global list. And the global list includes internationally relevant websites. So that has websites such as facebook.com, BBC, and others. Um, and the global list is tested by all Uniprobe users all around the world, regardless of country. But then depending on the country that you're running Uniprobe from, you will also test the websites in the country specific list. So for example, if you're running Uniprobe in Italy, you will test the global list and the Italian list. And the country specific list includes websites that are more relevant to your country. So for example, for the Italian list, it will have Italian news media, Italian human rights websites, and so on. Um, however, these lists are not infinite. Um, because we rely on people to run tests on the ground, and we, you know that there are bandwidth constraints, of course, uh, we don't have the capacity to be testing tens of thousands of websites. So we need to have a sort of a short lists with around a thousand websites. And what we really care about is that these lists um, are as diverse as possible in terms of contents, and that they also, um, you know, include uh, websites that are maybe uh, maybe touch upon human rights issues or political issues, and therefore are potentially more vulnerable to censorship. So while you will see uh, blocked websites in these lists, they also include many other websites that are not necessarily blocked right now, but are interesting to monitor for censorship in the long term. Um, especially during political events such as elections and protests. Um, so if you're interested in contributing to these lists, uh, we have a guide which explains how to do so on our website that I link to here. Um, however, we do realize that many of the community members who have um, the best background and expertise to contribute to these lists, such as social scientists and political scientists, may not necessarily be GitHub users. So in that case, if there, are, if there are websites you want to contribute to and don't use GitHub, uh, please feel encouraged to reach out to us and to share the websites and we'll be happy to add them for you. And on this note, uh, our team is busy building a web platform that will enable community contributions to these lists without the use of GitHub and we expect, expect to launch it over the next few months. Another way through which you can um, have more control over which websites you test is directly through the app. So in the websites card of the Uniprobe app, if you tap on it, you will see that there is a choose websites button. And by tapping on the choose websites button, you will see a screen such as the one that is here on the left. And there you can manually type in all the websites that you want to test and you can add as many websites as you want. And that way you can potentially limit your testing to only the websites that you have added and only test the websites you feel comfortable with. Another thing you can do is that maybe you do, maybe you want to test the, the websites that are in the Citizen Lab test list, but maybe you don't feel comfortable testing all of them. So these websites in the lists are categorized and they fall under 30 uh, diverse categories. And these categories include, for example, human rights issues, uh, news media, uh, LGBTQI, and many other categories. So depending on what you feel comfortable with testing, you can go to the website settings of the app and you can enable or disable the categories, uh, the website categories that you want to test, uh, such as in the, in, the, in the screen here on the right. But often, um, Web, often censorship happens very unexpectedly. Like often it can be the case that suddenly uh, specific websites are blocked in a country, maybe during protests or maybe during elections or some other political events. Um, we know, for example, through the Keep It On campaign that frequently social media websites get blocked uh, during political events. 
So in that case, how can you ensure that the specific websites that are reportedly inaccessible get tested uh, in a quick way? So to this end, we have built UniRun, which you can access at run.uni.io, which is a web platform through which you can generate a mobile deep link. A mobile deep link is a link which is meant to be used together with the UniProbe mobile app so that you can test the websites of your choice. And to do that, there where it says URL, there where it has the URL slots here on this page, you can add the websites that you wanna have tested. Um, and if you have a very long list of websites, you can just copy paste it into here. You don't need to manually type them one by one. And once you've added your websites, you can click on the generate button and it will generate this mobile deep link, this uni run link. And then this link, you can share it on social media with your contacts, you can share it by email, you can share it with your contacts anywhere around the world. Um, and assuming that they have the Uniprobe mobile app installed, all they need to do is tap on the link that you shared with them and the websites that you want them to test will appear in their app. And all they need to do is tap run to then test those websites. And this has been very useful over the years for coordinating uh, rapid testing and for responding quickly to emergent censorship events. Um, and it is used uh, a lot by our community members in Venezuela, in Ukraine, in uh, Southeast Asia and around the world. And we think it's great because it allows for more decentralized uh, community initiated uh, testing. Um, and the Keep It On campaign um, has made use of this quite a lot too. So we've talked a lot about the app and the tests, but then what about the data? So all of these Uniprobe test results are automatically sent to us and we automatically publish them in real time from all around the world. And we publish them on the one hand on the Uni API through which you can download the data, but we also publish them on this platform called Uni Explorer that you can access at explorer.uni.org, which is a web interface that we've built to enable human rights defenders, researchers, journalists, and lawyers uh, to uh, explore the data and find the data that is relevant to them. And so to this end, we've included a search tool through which you can search the measurements based on specific parameters. And we also include uh, country pages that provide an overview of measurement coverage and some of the most recent censorship events per country based on UNI data. And they also provide charts that are updated automatically. When looking at any data um, and trying to interpret and understand any data, there really are just these three things that are important to keep in mind. Um, so when we talk about any data, what we're talking about is basically an Uniprobe test result. And an Uniprobe test result can be one of these three things. It can be normal, which means that everything's okay which means that the tested service appears to be accessible based on UNI's methodology. Um, or it can be anomalous. And actually, it probably in most cases, what you will see is, rather in many cases, you will see anomalous measurements. An anomaly is a signal that something is wrong. It is a signal of potential censorship. Um, and the reason why we say signal and not confirmed or anything is because we don't have a way of automatically confirming these forms of censorship. So this will include forms of censorship like DNS tampering, uh, TCP IP blocking, and many other forms of censorship that cannot, uh, to, cannot be automatically confirmed based on the knowledge of the censorship measurement community. Um, and so you will find a lot of cases of censorship within anomalous measurements. But the reason why we say anomaly and not blocked is just to uh, highlight that it might be the case that some of these measurements may contain false positives, which means that it may be a case that it looks like censorship, but maybe it's not. So for example, it might be the case that um, a specific website when tested, it presents say a TCP IP anomaly, but it's not necessarily the case that it's blocked, but maybe it's the case that um, the test was run on an, on an unstable network. Or maybe it is the case that the website owner is blocking access uh, to IPs from a country rather than you know, your ISP implementing the censorship. Or maybe something may, like, may look like DNS-based censorship, but maybe 
um, it has it has to do with some form of DNS uh, misconfiguration, or maybe it is the case that um, certain content is uh, served differently depending on geographical location. So long story short, there are many reasons, many uh, technical networking reasons why false positives can occur, uh, which is why we flag them as anomalies. And so in these cases, it's very important to look at the raw measurement data to see what has happened. But more importantly, it is, it is important to look at data in aggregates. Um, and by this, we mean that instead of just looking at one anomalous measurement and treating it as evidence of censorship, rather, it's useful to look at all of the measurements pertaining to the testing of a specific service on a specific network to see if all of the measurements are presenting the same anomaly. If they are presenting the same anomaly, then that's a strong indicator that it is actually blocked. But if there's only one or few anomalies, then it may be the case that there are false positives. And to enable the community to look at UNI data in aggregate, we are currently building a new tool called the, the UNI Measurement Aggregation Toolkit um, through which you will be able to uh, very easily, um, you know, choose the parameters, choose what you what you want to see, and based on that, it will automatically present charts that aggregate measurements and enable you to do the sort of analysis. That being said, there are some cases of censorship that we're able to automatically confirm, and these are the cases when uh, a when the blocking of a website is implemented uh, through a block page. A block page is, a, is essentially a type of page, a web page that your ISP will give you instead of the content of the website you're trying to access. So maybe when accessing blocked websites around the world, maybe you've seen instead of the content of the website, you've seen some sort of notification telling you that, hey, you're not allowed to access this website per this regulation and so on. This is what is a block page. And so block pages have fingerprints. And this means that we're able to add the fingerprints of the block pages to our database and therefore automatically confirm these forms of censorship. Um, and actually, you can find them very easily through UNI Explorer. If you click on search on the top right corner and um, th then you select a country and you select confirmed at the bottom um, under the st status filter, you'll be able to get um, all the most recent cases of confirmed blocked websites. So these are the cases where we know 100% that they're blocked. You can filter this uh, globally and see which are the most recently confirmed blocked websites around the world, or you can limit it to a specific country or to a specific network uh, based on the filters um, on the left. And as mentioned, um, apart from UNI Explorer, where you can also download the data, you can go to the UNI API, where you can download all UNI uh, data in uh, raw format, in JSON format, in order to perform your own analysis and to potentially use it as part of your own research. Um, however, because uh, UNI Explorer relies on, depends on the UNI API, uh, we advise using the API for lightweight queries. If, for example, you want to download all the data for a specific country, in that case, we recommend use, uh, downloading UNI data from the Amazon S3 bucket, uh, just to ensure that UNI Explorer works well for everyone. And finally, if you're curious to know uh, what are some of the things that you can discover through UNI data, we encourage you to go to the reports section of our website where we document, where we publish various research reports based on the analysis of UNI data. And actually, many of these reports also include IOTA, IOTA data that was um, presented to you earlier. And yeah, we hope that um, this brief summary is useful to you. We hope you can stay in touch. Uh, you can find the UNI community on our Slack channel. And if you have any questions, uh, please get in touch uh, or share them and we can discuss them in the Q&A.